Hi guys, welcome back. It has been a long time since I have done any kind of video on this channel, but I'm gonna try to start getting back into it and we're gonna start off today with a tour of Krakow. We've been here for a year and I feel that since we've already been here for such a long time, we kind of know like all the really good places to go and what to see and what to do. So that is exactly what we're gonna do today. We're gonna start at our house, take the tram downtown, and then we're gonna kind of just show you all around downtown, go up to the castle, go to Kazimierz, and then come back. And you guys can just see a lot of what's actually downtown, what's around here, what to do, what it looks like, so you guys can kind of picture what this southern part of Poland looks like. So let's go. Hey guys, so I figured a voiceover would be the easiest way to do this. So we always take the tram whenever we go downtown, and where we live is only a few stops away from the mall. So we take the tram from our house, we go to the mall, and this is what the mall looks like. Um, it's kind of in a really cool square and in order to get downtown you walk from the mall underneath a bridge and the bridge has kind of some fun stores in it and the Ponchek stand. Oh my gosh you guys, this Ponchek stand, best Polish donuts of life. So once you finish walking underneath the bridge, you kind of come back up into the Cas or Green Park area, which actually used to be part of the moat surrounding Kraków. So it's just kind of green and has a lot of trees and it's really pretty. And around the green space, you have the Barbican, which you just saw, and the Florianska Gate. This is the main entrance into Old Town. And once you pass through the gate, you enter Florianska Street, which will take you right into the heart of Old Town. But you can see how beautiful this street is because you have the cathedral right down here and you have a lot of bars and restaurants and it is just so nice. It's definitely really touristy, but it is really pretty. And once you hit the end of that Florianska Street, you enter the main square. Yay, we're finally here. You can see the cloth market on the right, and now we're looking up at the St. Mary's Basilica for the cathedral. It was built in the 1200s, so it is quite old. The inside is really beautiful. It's bright blue and something you definitely have to see when you come here. Uh, you can just see the streets are lined with horses and carriages, which is very romantic. And there's a lot of alfresco dining, so you can see some umbrellas and people out and about eating. And that's just what happens around here in the summer. Wintertime, it looks very different. You have a lot of Christmas markets and trees and lights, and it is really beautiful. So now we're entering the cloth market. That's the building in the center of the square. And this is a place where people just bring their vendors and they sell a lot of things. So between Polish pottery and amber and everything like that, it's just a great place to do some shopping if that's what you're looking for. And you can see that the ceilings here are really full of the crests and the really beautiful lights and the architecture is really great. So it's just kind of fun to, you know, look around at the shopping, but then also make sure you tilt your head upwards to see some cool things. Once you exit the cloth market, you are entering the other side of the square. So on the other side of the cloth market, again, is where the cathedral is, and this is on the other side. So this is where the clock tower is, you can see right here. It's a really neat building, and there are some really amazing restaurants, as you can see, that just surround the cloth market. So over here is kind of where you get a lot of events and everything happening like that. And then here are some little Jeshjis walking around in their little Polish costumes, aren't they? So cute. I love it. So the clock or the clock tower is really great. And there's this restaurant here at the base is actually one of our favorite places to go. We always take the visitors and everyone there when they come to visit. So right now we're just kind of walking on the opposite side of the square and um, we're making our way down to Vauville Castle. So behind me is actually where the cathedral is. And this is just one of the side streets that you can take in order to get to the castle. This is what is currently, or used to be called the King's Road. So the, in the medieval times, the king and all of his uh, minions, I guess, would go back and forth from the castle to the cathedral. And um, that's kind of the road that they would take. So this is, again, it's just a very pretty touristy part of Krakow, but uh, you can definitely see why it is so beautiful. And here we have another cathedral, some really old buildings. We're still on the King's Road here. And I just love how old everything looks and how beautiful it is. 
and also how well preserved. And now we're at the very backside of Vaville Castle. So Vaville Castle, again, very, very old, I think built in the 1100s, 1200s. And I really do appreciate so much that they haven't built up a lot around the older parts of Krakow. They've just kind of kept it very uh, traditional and you know, keeping to its roots and everything. So to enter Vaville Castle, you can go up either side because there are walkways on both places. But we are entering up on the right-hand side where the <clears throat> horse and the castle is. And I feel like every European city has a horse with a man on it overlooking the river. And Krakow is no exception, as you can see right here. I feel like that statue is everywhere. And yeah, so we're entering into the castle complex. This is quite a large castle complex, and it's one that we definitely enjoy coming to. Whether or not we have visitors here, I feel like we'll just come down here on the weekend and just walk around because it is just so beautiful. So once you enter the top of the castle complex, this is what it looks like. You can see that there are a lot of really beautiful buildings. There is a really great church. You can actually climb up to the top of this clock tower that you see right there. And we've done that a few times before, it is really nice. And yeah, we just enjoy coming up here, looking at it, and um, it definitely is a huge symbol of Krakow. So when, if you ever do come here, make sure you spend some time up here because you can go inside and tour the castle and the clock tower and everything. Plus you get some really great views. And this is one other thing I love so much about Krakow is you get the great, trees and the water and all of the wonderful sights and then you also get these really cool medieval buildings this is the krakow dragon yes we have our own dragon and yes it breathes fire and how fabulous is that it just kind of goes back to the medieval times of the legend of uh, krakow dragon so if you ever come to krakow you have to learn more about it but just know we have a dragon and that makes krakow super awesome Okay, we've been walking for a few minutes and we just finished up at the castle. So we're about 10 minutes away or so from where we were just a few seconds ago at the Vaubel Castle. And now we have made our way over into the Kazimierz district. And Kazimierz is the old Jewish quarter. So it's a little bit of a different vibe and a different look. So it just kind of depends on what you're feeling for your time in Krakow, where Old Town is very regal and medieval. Uh, Kashmir is a little bit more artsy and just slightly different. So I will show you what it looks like in a minute. So this is entering into the Old Town of Kashmir and you can definitely see the difference in the buildings. They're a little bit more run down, uh, but they still look nice. So it just kind of depends on the vibe you're going for. But Kashmir definitely has a cool feel to it. We come down here a lot, we go to some bars and restaurants. This center area is kind of neat, it's just basically like mar an outdoor market. So they sell food and different crafts and things like that. And surrounding the market you have a lot of really really neat restaurants. And of course there are pigeons everywhere, you just, you can't escape it when you live in Europe. So you just can walk around here on a weekend, sit down and have some beers, some pastries with your friends. It really is a neat area and I would definitely recommend it if you do come to Krakow. I do love in Kashmir, it just feels a little bit more unique because you can see the different buildings and all of that kind of stuff. Okay, now here we are at the depot. And the depot is a really cool area. We enjoy hanging out here with our friends. Look at the lawn chairs, it's so fantastic. And it's also just kind of in a nice area. It's easy to get to and we enjoy it. So once you finish Kashmir, you end up at the Viswa, and we're only like 15 minutes away from here from where we live, so it's a perfect walk, easy to get to. I love this part of Krakow. Isn't it just so beautiful? And there you have it. I have completely finished our tour of Krakow. So you definitely didn't see everything. There's a whole bunch more to see in Krakow other than just Old Town and Kashmir and now the Viswa. But I hope it gave you kind of just a small idea of where we live, what we do, what we see every single day. But to be honest, really the best way to see Krakow is just to come visit it yourself because there's so much more to see and do here. Um, my parents spent about 
three full days just here in Krakow when they came to visit a few months ago and we walked everywhere, saw a lot more. Uh, but I hope you guys really enjoyed this and I think it's really fun to just kind of show you where we live because it's so much different than anywhere we lived in America and that just makes it so cool. The people here are so nice, the food is great, it's really cheap and I just can't say enough good things about it. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. We will talk to you later.